Hello everyone, welcome back to the National Association of Safety Professionals channel. Today we're going to take a look at physical and chemical properties. We'll be breaking down complex scientific terms into layperson language, making it easy for everyone to understand. We'll discuss properties like appearance, odor, pH, melting point, boiling point, and flash point, and how understanding these can help ensure safety in the workplace. So sit back, relax, and let's unravel the world of chemical properties together. And if you haven't already, be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of our videos. Now let's get started. Chemical properties are characteristics that become evident during a chemical reaction. These properties are crucial to understand as they can help us predict how substances will behave and interact with each other. One of the most common chemical properties we encounter daily is pH. While the scientific definition of pH is the negative logarithm of the hydrogen ion activity across a semi-permeable membrane, meaning how many hydrogen ions are released when a material is dissolved in water, it's easier to understand it as a measure of how acidic or alkaline a substance is. It is measured on a scale of 0 to 14, 0 being extremely acidic, while 14 being extremely basic. For instance, sodium hydroxide is a very basic or alkaline material, while sulfuric acid is a strong acid. Either one can do permanent damage to the skin. But remember this, for every increase or decrease in alkalinity or acidity, that is a tenfold increase or decrease of acidity or alkalinity. For example, water has a pH of 7. So a weak acid with a pH of 4 is not three times as acidic, but 1,000 times as acidic as a 7 based on a logarithmic scale. Another example of a chemical property is the presence of certain hazardous chemicals in substances. Take gasoline, for instance. It contains benzene, a chemical that can be harmful and may cause cancer if not handled properly. In the past, people used gasoline as a solvent to remove oil and grease, not realizing the potential dangers. Understanding these properties is not just for scientists. It's crucial for everyone, especially those who work with chemicals. Knowing these properties can help protect us from potential hazards. In the case of gasoline, it is vital to use proper PPE, including gloves that are designed to protect you from permeation through the material and possibly the use of a respirator. Now let's move on to appearance. In terms of chemical properties, appearance refers to the physical state and color of a substance. For instance, water is a clear liquid at room temperature, while iron is a solid gray metal. The appearance of a substance can change under different conditions. For example, water turns into a solid ice when it's cold and into a gas, steam when it's hot. Odor is another chemical property. It's the smell that a substance produces. Some materials have a strong odor like ammonia, while others like carbon dioxide are odorless. The odor of a substance can sometimes give us clues about its other properties. For instance, a rotten egg smell often indicates the presence of hydrogen sulfide, a toxic gas. Unfortunately, at higher concentrations, you become sensitized to hydrogen sulfide and may not smell anything. This can be an issue as higher concentrations can be lethal. Hydrogen sulfide can typically be found around waste treatment plants, landfills, and the oil and gas industry. Basically anywhere there is decaying organic matter. This is how this deadly gas is produced. The melting point is the temperature at which a solid substance turns into a liquid. For example, the melting point of ice is 0 degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. If you heat ice to this temperature, it will turn into water. The melting point can tell us a lot about a substance. For instance, metals with high melting points are often used in situations where high temperatures are expected. The boiling point is the temperature at which a liquid turns into a gas. To stay with the water example, the boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius or 212 degrees Fahrenheit. 
If you heat water to this temperature, it will turn into steam. The boiling point can tell us about a substance's volatility. Substances with low boiling points are more volatile and can easily turn into gases. They usually have a much higher vapor pressure. Examples of this include nitrogen, liquid petroleum gas, chlorine and ammonia. Some tanks containing flammable materials can blevy, meaning they can heat up under pressure and rupture, causing violent explosions. Finally, let's talk about flash points. The flash point is the lowest temperature at which a substance's vapors can ignite when exposed to an ignition source. For example, gasoline has a low flash point, which means it can ignite easily, making it dangerous to handle near open flames or sparks. On the other hand, substances with high flash points like motor oil are less likely to ignite and are therefore safer to handle. The concept of flash point, a temperature, and lower explosive limit a concentration go hand in hand. Keep in mind, there has to be enough of a material mixed with air to form an ignitable mixture. This is referred to as a material's LEL, or lower explosive limit. This is especially important when dealing with confined spaces where these materials may pool and explode if an ignition source is introduced. You will most likely encounter these various chemical properties on an SDS or safety data sheet. In the context of an SDS, these properties are presented in a structured manner, typically found in Section 9 of most updated SDSs. The SDS may not contain every item on the list because information may not be relevant or is not available. When this occurs, a notation to that effect must be made for that chemical property. Hopefully, you now have a better understanding of the basics of chemical properties. If you'd like to learn more, we recommend the Certified Safety Manager course offered by NASP. You may also find the HazWapper Specialist and Hazard Communication Specialist courses useful. We'll put a link to all of these courses in the description below. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe below, and if you have any topics that you'd like us to take a look at, let us know in the comments section. We'll see you in the next video, and until then, stay safe.